Okay, just a, a brief comment just to uh, keep us all on track here. So we're talking about consequentialist principles. Uh, soon, next lesson, we'll talk about respect for persons principles. So principles are abstract, um, abstract features, abstract, um, abstract conditions that make actions good. So here we're talking about the idea that consequences, doing good consequences, avoiding bad consequences, makes your actions good, makes your actions right. The opposite makes them wrong. <coughs> Um, consequentialism and consequentialist, uh, we pay attention to those. So consequentialist principles, that's an adjective there. So it's just describing principles who focus, which focus on consequences as the source of right and wrong. Consequentialism is a noun. It's talking about a view, a theory, um, a theory that says only consequences make actions right and wrong. They can't be made right and wrong any other way. Um, any other claim for something being right or wrong has to reduce to consequences. Peter Singer is a famous consequentialist philosopher. He advocates consequentialism. Okay, um, we are already we, you know, we've already talked about the fact that we're advocating a pluralist view. Principalism is a pluralist view. Consequentialist principles are one principle amongst many. OK, so as we as you start reading around in bioethical literature, this is something to keep in mind. The two consequentialist principles that we are going to be interested in, and I don't know if there's really there's any others, is our beneficence and non-maleficence. Beneficence is the moral principle that actions or practices are right insofar as they produce good consequences. Insofar as they produce bad consequences, they would be wrong. Uh, Non-maleficence is the moral principle that actions or practices are right insofar as they avoid producing bad consequences. If they produce bad consequences, as we said before, they would be wrong. Okay, so we'll stop there. Um, just to, again, a brief video just to um, make these distinctions for you so you've heard them. And we will look a little bit more at some examples of beneficence and non-maleficence in a moment.